Alright, hi everyone. So this video is going to be something that I haven't really done before on this channel, and that's going to be a review for one single video game. And that game in question, and I'm probably going to uh, butcher the uh, pronunciation of this title, is Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. So from now on I'm just going to call this game Fighting Climax. Now for full disclosure, um, the copy of this game was kindly provided by Sega of Europe themselves, and all the screens that you see right now um, I have permission to use from Sega of Europe, so yay for me. And there are also press assets which are freely available on Sega's website which are free to use for stuff like reviews and critique. Okay, so I know we got that on the way. Um, let's go on with the review I guess. First of all, the uh, the uh, there's two versions of this game. There's a PlayStation Vita version and there's the PlayStation 3. Now, the one I I chose to review was the PS3 version. Um, why did I pick that one over the Vita? Um, good question. No reason really. I just thought it would play better on a PS3. But um, from what I can tell, there is virtually no difference between the two of them at all. Uh, the only real difference is um, the Vita has a much cooler, I think, built-in moveset list than the PS3 version does. But anyway, that's um, apples and oranges, really. That's not really an issue. Okay, so I should probably start with a bit of a confession. Um, my knowledge and experience of anime, or anime, I again, I'm not sure how you sort of pronounce that, it's pretty bad. Um, whilst I've watched some anime and I've really enjoyed it, um, if I were to quote some of the shows that I'd watched, um, probably a lot of the super fans out there would call me a noob or whatever the equivalent is in the anime uh, community. But that said, from what I have watched, I have really enjoyed it, and I really do wish that I have watched, I had watched more of it, and that I um, could have experienced it a lot more, a lot more, because I, I do generally like the stuff that I have seen, and there's plenty out there that I would like to get into. It's just having the actual means to do so, which I don't at this point particularly have. So the idea of this game, um, if you don't know, it's basically a bunch of um, characters from a range of Dengeki Bunko uh, public publications and what they've done is they've taken all these characters from all these different animes and they place them in a single game and all the backdrops all the stages that they fight on are taken from iconic Sega games so okay I can see where you're going from with this one so if you're someone like me and bear in mind my reviews can sort of reflect my personal situation on here and probably you should probably come to this review with sort of that mindset. Someone who isn't really that exposed to anime, but is kind of familiar, is well, pretty familiar with Sega stuff, and basically coming into the get to coming into the game from that kind of angle. Obviously, if you're a massive anime super fan, then probably you're going to get a lot more hype from this title based on the various characters that are in there. So for me, I lack the initial, oh my god, so-and-so is in this, or wow, that guy's in this, I didn't know he was going to be in that, or yay, she's in this game, oh yeah, I can't wait to play as her. Yeah, for me, I kind of have to treat this as a brand new IP. Well, that's not necessarily a problem, I can do that, but obviously, with games like this, there exists a certain hype. And it's very true for various games that... Um, a kind of crossovers. For example, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you might remember there was the whole, oh, who's going to be in it? Is Phoenix Wright going to be in it, for example? And then he did get announced for, for it, well, technically, and uh, various other Marvel characters like that. And then you've got stuff like All Stars Racing Transformed, where there was the whole, oh, I wonder if this character's going to be in it. I wonder if this character will be referenced. You know, there is, there is a level of excitement and build-up there. And if you want a more recent example, check out some of the threads regarding Smash Brothers. The, the hype and excitement people have when certain characters reveal, are revealed is huge. And that does have an impact over your initial impressions of the game. But if you're not into it, you kind of have to treat them as new IPs, which is what I'm kind of technically doing here. So, does that cause a problem? Well, initially it does, um, and the reason being is the fighting game has a story mode, 
The problem is that the story mode is pretty weak. It's universal for every character, for one thing. So say you pick one character, you run through the story, you get a kind of disappointing story, and then you pick the next character, it's exactly the same. Now the issue with this is that it's very difficult then to actually get into any character based on narrative and story because obviously if the story is pretty weak and the dialogue is pretty much identical it's very hard to see them as different characters. They, Whilst they look different and their movesets are different when you actually see them talking it's the exact same words. So yeah it's pretty difficult there. Okay um yeah, and when, when we actually talk about the story, the fact that um, it's universal, I really struggle to think of a fighting game that actually did this. And, um, or certainly did it recently, or certainly that has ever done this. Um, if you think back to games like the original Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, or if you want to go really out the ballpark, games like Eternal Champions, if, if you picked a character, you would fight through the first, you would fight through the um, the opponents, you defeat the boss, and then you would usually get an ending. And all the endings were different. There was different art assets and different um, scenes that you would see. Now, some of them might not be the most original, but they were they were all different. They they at least tried. This doesn't have any of that. It's exactly the same. So, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Um, there is another offline mode, and this one is kind of odd. It's, um, say you pick one character, and then you're matched up against, um, I think it's either four or five different opponents. And before each fight, there is a small sequence of dialogue between them. Now, it's very small, but it does add, it does add a bit of character to them. Like, um, <coughs> oh, excuse me, like, um, I think it's, a uh, Kiro from, um, uh, Sword Art Online, um, as you as you encounter different characters with him, um, he'll comment on their gear and their various weapons. And he, at one point, he actually jokes, "If I beat you, do I get your flame sword?" I thought that was quite good. That was quite a good bit of interaction. And um, it's kind of the same for the other characters. The dialogue's different there. There is you do get to see what they're like as individual entities and how they would act in their universe towards people from a different one. So yeah, I kind of like that. That's pretty good. The problem is, this isn't the main mode of the game, and it's basically an extra mode. It's alright, but I just don't see much point in it, and I kind of wonder, why wasn't this the main story mode? Or why didn't you expand on this? This would be much more interesting to see more interaction, more unique interaction, and it would make more sense for this to be the actual story mode itself. But anyway... Um, that's probably just me wanting to get something more from the characters, because like I said, I don't really know much about them, so it's kind of hard for me to get too hype with them. So let's talk about the gameplay. And, yeah. Okay. I should say right now, unless you're super, super, super serious about fighting games, example, you're one of these people that sort of sits at a screen watching the moveset frame by frame, analysing various sequences to try and figure out exactly when the best time is to block, to do a move, you know, you know, that that guy, as I believe um, that guy from The Escapist calls it. Unless you're that guy, odds are you're probably actually going to enjoy this game. And the reason why I say that is it's a very good beginner's fighting game. In fact, it's actually quite an enjoyable beginner's fighting game at that. The difficulty curve is quite low and it doesn't get stupidly high and it doesn't climb stupidly fast. The initial characters that you come across are an absolute joke and a pushover. For most of the time they just stand there and maybe occasionally throw the odd punch. But then as you go along, they start doing basic combos and then when you finally reach the last few, they're... They're doing some more advanced combos, but it's nothing ridiculous. You know, a, an average player would be able to beat them no problem. Now, there might be an argument there that, that, that therefore makes the game too easy, but this is on normal difficulty and there are harder modes, so I guess you could probably tweak that to make it a lot more challenging. But for an entry-level fighting game, it's actually pretty good and pretty decent, and you do feel some level of progression. 
I expect that people out there that take part in various fighting tournaments, they might not enjoy it or might consider it, I don't know, beneath them maybe, if because of how easy it actually is. But I don't know. Maybe against maybe against actual human players, that's where the obviously that's where the challenge and the joy of these kind of games lie. But against an AI AI opponent, it is a little bit easy. But that said, it's probably a pretty good entry level for those of you who don't take this kind of genre too seriously. So we should probably talk about the actual character roster for this game. Um, now this is actually quite shocking when I when I uh, check this out. Um, the roster is actually really small. There's only a few characters. Um, I can't remember how many exactly there are off the top of my head, but it is really small. Um, now, you can unlock two additional characters to play as. Um, I don't think there are any more to unlock in this game. There might be one additional character, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that, and so far I haven't seen any evidence to suggest that there is. Now, there are tons of support characters. But these characters you can't actually play at. So what they do is uh, when you press a button or a certain command, they'll come flying in and perform an attack or help you extend your combo, you know, something like that. You don't actually play as them. You can't actually interact with them very well. So, yeah, the roster here is pretty small. And is that a problem? Well, yes and no. On the one hand, it means that well, you know, I, I don't know with this one. Um, I can see arguments for both. The problem I had was um, I picked up one, I played, picked one character, uh, played through the story mode and beat it. And I have to admit, I really didn't enjoy it. And I think, um, well, the reason, the reason why um, I didn't enjoy it was I looked at the characters. Like I said earlier, I have no idea who the bulk of these characters are. I've heard of some of the animes that they're from, but I know nothing about them. So I just picked a character at random, played through the game, really didn't enjoy it. So I then picked another character at random, played through the game again, and whilst I was getting better at the game, um, I can't exactly say that I was finding much fun from it. So I tried one more character, and again I sort of felt the same. Whilst I was getting better with the character, uh, with the the character, like sort of understanding how the game worked more, being able to pull off more elaborate combos and learning when was the best time to use my support character, I still really wasn't feeling it. Now, any other day I probably would have given up there and I probably would have gone away saying that it's not a very good game and you should probably avoid it. But no, I'm not going to say that because um, the reason why I came to that conclusion initially was by the time I'd used the third character, it was nearly one quarter of the whole roster that I'd used. So the impression the game gave me was that the whole roster was going to be like this. It just wasn't going to be fun or satisfying. But the next character I picked at random was uh, Kurito from Sword Art Online. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, the guy with the sword that's like the main guy. Anyway, I picked him, played through it. And I absolutely loved it. Um, frankly, this was the character that I should have picked to play to begin with. This is what I would call an entry-level character for this game. Um, his combos are really easy to pull off. His animations make his movements look really cool. And it's amazingly satisfying to play, to play as this character, especially as a beginner and a novice to a fighting game. Um, if you remember um, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 when that came out, there was quite a lot of people who picked, um, I think it was Dante. And the reason being is he was a really good entry level character that actually looked pretty cool to play as. Well, this is this character, this is this game's Dante. Um, he actually looks pretty cool and he's very satisfying to play as, and you can actually do some pretty decent damage against the opponent. But he's obviously not going to be the best character, or, well, I don't know, he might be, in the hands of an expert. But that said, he's a really good entry-level character, and he's probably the character I should have played before. So, I then picked another character at random, and again, I really enjoyed that one as well. So, I think the problem was, because I wasn't really sure of who the characters were, it seemed that there wasn't really much incentive for me to pick one over the other, and because the roster is so small and the first three that I picked at random were so 
no, I don't want to say bad, but the fact I didn't get much, much from them. The initial impressions are very misleading. You could go away thinking this game is terrible, all the characters play the same, and I, and I feel... No, no, that's wrong. The characters don't all play the same, but they sort of give you the same feeling, and that for me that was kind of a little bit of disappointment. But then when I picked these other characters further down the roster, I really, really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it a lot, in fact. It was a really fun game. And um, yeah, here I am now sat playing a game full of characters that I know nothing about, um, who I, well, yeah, who I know nothing about. I'm effectively playing a, a new IP right now, and I'm actually really enjoying myself. So yeah, mission accomplished. That's it. Um, if you want to stop right now, go ahead. There's your review. The game is actually really fun when you get into it. It's pretty decent. It's a good fighting game. It's a brilliant for. It's a brilliant beginner entry level game. I don't know if experts at it will necessarily find it a challenging and compelling experience, but hey, it's a pretty decent fighting game if you take out the fact that obviously most of the hype is going to be on various fan service and crossover of all these well-known characters. So, um, oh yeah, actually, um, another thing that I think a lot of people really enjoy about this is the special moves. Um, quite a lot of them are hysterical. Like, you've got one character that um, turns the opponent into a basketball, dribbles it around the stage, and actually shoots a slam dunk. Um, another character uh, traps you in a giant... Uh, UFO catcher claw machine and plucks you up from the stage and throws you to the ground and some of these are actually pretty funny. So yeah, if you get into the game, if you approach it like I did, not knowing who the characters are, if you give it a chance you can actually find quite a lot of enjoyment from it. But that said, there are some problems which regardless as to if you're familiar with the characters or not, you probably are going to sort of... Um, see and experience and they're going to sort of bring the game down a little. Now one example of this is the actual stages that you fight on. And this was like the main appeal for me, the fact that um, they're set on various stages which are from various Sega games and IPs. Yeah, um, how should I put this? These stages don't have any life in them whatsoever. Now. You're probably looking at some of the screens thinking, oh wow, some of those stages look really cool, and you probably can recognise a bunch of them. But some of them, when you're playing, they, they look dead. There's um, there's a stage for, um, again, I'm probably going to butcher, butcher the pronunciation of this, uh, Valkyria Chronicles. You're fighting um, in what looks like an area that's full of tanks, and there's a great big castle wall behind behind them. And there's nothing going on. You're, you're literally, it is just, oh, tanks. Ooh, tanks and a wall. Yay, let's fight. And that's it. Nothing's going on in there. The shinobi stage, I didn't even realise it was a shinobi stage. It just looked like um, a, Jap a Japanese temple or some kind of, um, oh, I can't remember what they're called. Those those strange uh, temple towers that being with the uh, letter P. I, I can't remember what they are. But I just thought it was like a generic um, ninja stage. I didn't realise it was um, it was it was supposed to be shinobi. And um, amazingly, the the stage that has the most life in it is the Sonic stage. And the only reason for this is that all the rings rotate and some of the flowers bloom. Now, there's also a night stage as well. And the only thing that happens in this stage is every now and again a train moves through it and some of the um, little rings and stars sort of uh, beam and glisten a little bit. But otherwise, nothing happens. And all I can think of is, what happened? Because um, even if you go back to the original Street Fighter 2, there was so much life in those stages. Like, um, you would fight on um, Guile stage, there would be a guy sort of cheering you from the side of fighter jets. Um, uh, let's make a Chun Li stage. There's so much going on in that. There's even um, there's even chickens in baskets sort of uh, crowing at you and things. There's a guy in a bicycle going past. There's people cheering you on, and um, something like I think it's Zangief stage. There's some drunks uh, boozing it up down there. But on this on these stages, there's nothing. And all I can think of is, 
Why is there no soldiers sat on the tanks in the Valkyria Chronicle stage cheering you on, maybe even placing bets? Um, why doesn't Sonic run through the Green Hill Zone stage? Why doesn't knights fly across the screen in knights? And the only reason I can think of for this, which makes any bit of sense, is licensing issues. I have a feeling it's something to do with that, because it seems like such a missed opportunity. In fact, um, how dead is the Shinobi stage in terms of life? The only thing I've seen happen in that is occasionally some leaves will blow across the screen. Now some people might think this is a good thing because in a lot of fighting games it's quite often to find there's a lot of um, action going on on the stage itself and some people have argued that this is quite distracting to the actual combat. Yeah, I can sort of see that argument, but for me, I kind of like it when there's a lot of stuff going on. I like how on some games you punch your opponent, and depending on how hard the combo is or the last attack is, it will destroy a part of the stage. It really empowers you. But on this, there is nothing. There is no life whatsoever. The stages look completely dead. Okay, um, another strange thing which quite a lot of fans, maybe if you're coming into this for the Sega stuff, you might find disappointing is the stage music. Now, uh, Fighting Climax has its own uh, theme which plays, and it's pretty good. It is really catchy. But, okay, here's an example. You start the game up, you fight on the Sonic stage, it's Green Hill Zone, what do you think's gonna play? Green Hill Zone music? No. How should I describe the music? Imagine they took every single Sonic song from Sonic Generations and maybe Sonic Adventure, put them in a blender, poured out the result, and put that through a mixing studio. It's weird. Um, it's like uh, the most random remix I've ever heard. And um, it's that difficult. It, it, it's not bad music, but... It's mashed up so much to a degree that it is incredibly difficult to actually say, ah, that's from that game, or that's from that level. There's things I can get from Sonic CD, and I'm pretty sure there's some songs from Sonic Adventure in there. Uh, but, yeah, it's very difficult to pick out spe uh, specific moments, and it's the same for the night stage. Um, there's stuff which I can definitely recognise. I, I wouldn't be able to quote the actual songs for you, but... I definitely recognise it when I when I originally played Knights, but I definitely it's definitely not full songs that they've put in there. It's like such a mishmash of music. Uh, you sat there thinking, wait, is this from the game? Isn't it? I recognise that. I don't recognise that bit. So yeah, um, again, I'm not sure what the, what's going on there. It's not bad the music. It's actually pretty good, but it's a little bit. Disappointing if you go in thinking, oh, I'm going to hear a remix of this song. Um, yeah, you're going to hear a remix, all right, but it's pretty much unrecognisable. Okay, um, another problem which this game has, and yeah, um, this again is a bit of a a bit of an issue on how you yourself are going to be with this game. For example, I don't particularly want to play this game for months and months because I just won't enjoy it for that length of time. And I don't want to spend every spare minute I have practicing at the game and getting better and better at it. The problem this game has is it came out in Japan nearly a year ago, and it's only just been released in Western territories within the last uh, two weeks. So what do you think the um, experience is like when you go online? Yeah, it's pretty damn one-sided. In fact, um, I'd played the game for a while now, and I thought, okay, I'll go online and I'll uh, set match. I'll set up the matchmaking rules so I'm not just going to get my ass completely kicked. Yeah, uh, the game matches me up against a guy who has well over, I think it was uh, something like about 160 wins to something like about four losses, and something like a, a, and all I could think of when I saw this was. Oh, I wonder how this is going to go. Yeah, it didn't go very well. And uh, so then I tried another one. And yeah, this time I got matched up against a guy who had over 200 wins. 
And yeah, you could probably see where this was going. Um, the problem is the game right now is primarily dominated by people that got in over a year ago, Japanese players or people who somehow imported the game. It's very one-sided and you will probably go on there, play online just to get the online trophy and just be like, there really is absolutely no point in me continuing this unless you're into seriously studying the game, learning it, getting better so you can actually hold your own against these players. But yeah, there's a question of will you actually want to do that? Okay, um, let's go back on to some more positives, because there are quite a lot in this game. Um, you might, may or may not know, this is actually an arcade, it was originally an arcade game, and it's actually a port. And uh, it's it's the same title, you can probably still find it in, in random places. So, it's a port of an arcade game, um, how well does it run? Well, unless I sit down with some technical equipment and monitor the frame rate progress bar with a microscope, you know, put some serious technical wizardry gimmicks on and um, study it in detail. I honestly cannot see a problem with it. It runs fine on my PS3. I've not noticed any lag. I've not noticed any random technical glitches or glaring errors. It seems to run fine. It's a pretty good arcade port. They've done actually a pretty decent job turning it, taking it from the arcades and putting it on the whole home console system. And doing some wider reading, I've not seen any major complaints with the Vita version either. So it seems to run pretty good on both systems. So, how should I sum this up? Um, this is really odd. Um, obviously, if you're into these characters and you know these universes, and you and you kind of, that you're you're going to get some hype and excitement. There's no way you're not. And on that premise alone, you're probably going to rush out and buy it, because obviously you're caught up in like the hype world with all these characters that you know and love that are in there. Um, in terms of if it's actually a good game, yes it is good, but you kind of have to stick with it a little bit, because, um, well in my experience it took me a couple of playthroughs before I was like, oh I get this now, and I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get a lot more fun from it. Um, there are tons of unlocks in this game. Uh, they mainly go for customizing your online avatar, but um, yeah, there are tons of unlocks here, so the replay value is going to be quite, quite high. Um, I probably should also say that um, during the actual time I've played this, I'm actually becoming a lot more into some of the various anime that's represented here, and I have watched one or two episodes of Sword Art Online. And probably I will continue to watch that and maybe even move off into some of the other anime that's that's represented in the game and even into the wider universe there. So I guess the intention for that therefore is a success. Um, but in terms of actually will I find this game fun and enjoyable? You probably will because I did and I didn't expect to. But... I will say you have to stick with it, especially if you don't know who many of the characters are, or there's some characters that you're not really, you don't really want to play as. Because some of the characters are clearly there for when you start to master the game more, they're a lot more difficult to play as, whereas some characters are clearly entry level, but obviously there's no way to tell which is which at the moment. So, yeah, um, it's also, uh, if you're a fan of anime uh, and these characters, you, you're going to love it. And from a technical standpoint, it's very, very good. And it is fun and enjoyable when you get into it, and it's very, very beginner-friendly. And obviously, if you've got friends that own the game, you're probably going to be playing online with them. Uh, the bad points are, it's a very small playable roster. It's one of the smallest I've ever seen. Uh, story mode is just... Well, naff, basically. It's the same story for every character. The stages need so much more life into them. They just look dead. Um, they're, they're rendered very nicely, but yeah, they just look lifeless. And unless you intend to play for months, the online mode is going to be very, very depressing. But that said, yes, you probably will find fun from it. I certainly did. And there are probably a lot worse games out there that you could take a risk on so yeah if you're into fighting games but 
are looking for a good entry level one, I'd probably say this is actually quite a good entry level one to get into. Okay, so I guess now we should talk about the giveaway, shouldn't we? <laughs> hey! So yeah, um, I've got a couple of codes here to give away, uh, one for the PlayStation 3 version and one for the Vita version. So if you want to get a hold of these codes, um, what you have to do basically is um, like this video and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below the video state um, if you want the PS3 version or the Vita version and you should also be aware that these are European codes only they will only work on the EU store. What I'll do is after a couple of days I will message you if you're the lucky winner or winners as it might be. Okay guys, uh, I guess that's all there is to say. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thank you to Sega for getting in touch. Um, it was my pleasure to play this game because I didn't think I would get into it and enjoy it, but I did. And um, yeah, hope to see you again next time, guys. Goodbye.